Hey, Jeff. How you doing? You want anything? Blowjob. That's, uh, that's the first set. The anesthesia it makes you feel really, really good. It, it also obviously reduces your inhibitions. Just ignore what he says. The, the story of Kendra came about uh, after uh, I had a procedure, a medical procedure, an endoscope. And uh, it was a kind of uh, unremarkable uh, experience, except for the fact that when my wife was driving me home to work, I uh, made about 15 minutes worth of phone calls and then got to the office, promptly fell asleep for about two and a half hours, and uh, woke up raring to go and received 25 or 30 phone calls, and I had no idea what they were talking about. Uh, and apparently I had called people and given them suggestions, requests, asked questions, whatever you do on, in the normal turn of business, and uh, the drug, Verset, actually does wipe out your memory. I love you. I love you too, Carla. Mm, sweetie, it's me, Macy. It starts in a recovery room, um, and you follow Kendra being in a place where this particular drug that is focused on or said, um, how that affects people and the kind of things she hears, uh, you know, coming out of the patient's mouths as they're coming to and coming back into reality. Who's Carla? The best. The best what? The best. Money Certainly in the recovery period, uh, people are not themselves, but they are. They're euphoric, and uh, very often they bury themselves in their personal relationships. They say things they would never say to their partners or to the people they're close to. What are you, what are you doing? Are you making love with her? Oh, God, yeah. And, uh, and that got John thinking what must it be like to be in a room like that all the time and to watch people when they have no control over themselves. Uh, how does that affect you and what kind of person would be drawn to work there? So Kendra isn't, she's an amazingly three-dimensional character. Should I ask more? I, I can't answer that for you. I was interested in exploring what's it like when you live in a room, a recovery room, where you're seeing people who are possibly or probably the more truthful version of themselves and as the drug wears off or if you take oxygen they literally put on their clothes and become who they're who they are but also who they're not you see this all the time you said in this room ma'am in, in a few minutes he'll leave and this will be over memory reality um identity um the space between reality and, and, and non-reality. I think I'm, I'm the, sort of the pragmatic person in the piece, I, you know, I'm the doctor. Kind of, sort of, above what's existing in that, in that uh, twilight room for, for the other characters. What did you mean when you said, in this room? This is not quite the real world. What is it? Twilight. Twilight, that period of, of time in the day that's neither night nor day, or isn't it? I mean, there's something there. It's, it's sort of a surreal piece in a way. It's this kind of blend of reality and, and surrealism, if that's the correct term. Uh. <laughs> it's surreal.